Hello, Peter. What's happening? Uh, we have sort of a problem here. Yeah. So the lease on our colo is ending, so we've decided to move everything to the cloud. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. I... But I'm starting my vacation next week, so I can't start a long migration project now. Yeah. Have you talked to Milton on the app team? He owns the apps anyway. Yeah. I'm also going to need you to go ahead and come in on Sunday, too, OK? And uh, I'll go ahead and make sure you get another copy of that memo. Thanks. So Peter obviously needs our help with this migration and to get that guy off his back. So what do we do? Well, there's five steps to any migration. Discovery, assessment, review, plan, and migrate. And this all comes together right here in the Azure Migrate Hub. Click at the top to create your migration project, then select your subscription and resource group as always, and then give your project a name. As for your location, there's no regions to pick from here. Instead, you select a geography, and that's where all of the metadata of your project is going to be stored. But don't worry, when you actually do the migration, you'll be able to pick your regions. Oh, and one more thing, at the bottom here, the advanced section. Here's where you can set your connectivity to go over the public internet or Azure private link. Now, if you go public, your data is going to get encrypted just like a VPN would, so no worries. But if you have a high-speed site-to-site VPN or an express route, the private endpoint could really speed things up. Just be aware that private link is going to consume about 15 IP addresses on your virtual network. And if your virtual network where your express route or VPN is connected is not the same virtual network where you want your VMs to land, you're going to need to set up peering first. But in my example, I'll just choose public and click create. And uh, we'll go ahead and get this all fixed up for you. Now the discovery phase is where we'll use a lightweight appliance to talk to your on-prem hosts. And the computers that you can migrate to the cloud can be either physical or virtual on VMware, Hyper-V, Zen, or any other virtualization platform and from any other cloud. You just pick where you want to migrate from and I'll take Hyper-V. Then you give your appliance a name, and then you click to generate your key. This is how Azure Migrate will secure that appliance and all that metadata and make sure it only goes into your project. And that's going to include things like your configurations, performance data, and application data. And we're going to need all that stuff for the next step. Once that's done, click to download the appliance however you like. And if you do choose the VMware OVA file or Hyper-V's virtual hard drive, I hope you have a good connection because these are very large files and it's going to take a while. I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. The nice part though is these are fully configured servers all ready to go. On the other hand, you could just download the 500 megabyte package, which is all of the bits that you'll need, and then you have to install that on your own server. And because that one's going to involve a bit more setup, that's the one I'll walk you through. As for prerequisites, you're going to need to have admin rights on all of your target hosts, as well as the WinRM port open, and that's 5985. Once you get the zip downloaded, extract everything, and then open PowerShell as administrator. Switch over to that directory, and then you want to run the Azure Migrate Installer script. Once it's done, over on your desktop, you'll have a new icon for the Azure Migrate appliance. When you open that, it'll run through some checks to make sure the system is got everything it needs. And then you need to give it that migration project key that we downloaded earlier. This again connects this appliance to your project. And after that's been accepted, scroll down and then enter your Azure credentials. Once that's all out of the way, we're in section two. And that's where we add our host servers or clusters. And we can do that by their FQDNs or their IPs. And to do that, we're going to need some credentials. Yeah, uh, well, I'm just not sure about that right now. So click Add, and the friendly name here is how we're going to refer to those particular creds, and you can set up multiple credentials if you need to. Then you just set your username and password and click Save. And down here is where we click Add for our hosts. And you can do this by a single server or multiple servers at once. And if you have a whole lot of them, you can even upload that data through a CSV file. 
and the appliance will then go and check each one of the hosts that it can communicate with it, it's got the right amount of permissions, and that the ports are open. Let's come back another time. I got a meeting with the Bobs in a couple of minutes. And once all that's verified, we can move on to section three. Now this is optional, but generally recommended if you want that deeper dive in software inventory and dependencies, which is gonna make understanding your data a lot easier. So just add credentials like you did before, and then the appliance will go through and check everything. And once it's all good, you can finally click the discover button at the bottom. Back in the Azure portal, after the discovery phase is complete, you should see a count here of your discovered servers and all of your appliances. And now we have to make a choice. I know, uh, Bill talked to me about it. Now you can start migrating things right now and just move everything as is into the cloud. Or you can take a more thoughtful approach and create assessments. This is where you can start grouping servers together and configuring how you want them to look in Azure. And that's also gonna include some right sizing, which can save you a lot of money. If you could just go ahead and make sure you do that from now on, that would be great. So let's create an assessment. First, you pick your type of source environment and then where the data is coming from. In this case, our appliance. And now you wanna click the edit button right here so that you can configure the assessment. And we've got a whole bunch of parameters here, starting with your region. And that's where the VMs are actually gonna be migrating to. Then your savings options, which come in the form of Azure's reserved instances and savings plans, which are another video. Then the sizing criteria gives you the choice to just size things as it was on-prem or based on its performance data from on-prem. And to figure that out, we need to know how far back in time you should look. And that's the performance history, which means that you can let this appliance run for a month before you even do this part so that you have the most amount of data possible. And then you just set your time frame and your utilization. With every decision you make, is this good for the company? Next, you pick the VM sizes, and this gives Azure an idea of what size and type of VMs you're looking for. And then there's a comfort factor, because we don't always know what on-prem is gonna equal in the cloud. So a 1X would be, if I had two cores on-prem, give me two cores in the cloud, no questions asked. But if you select up to 2x, you're giving Azure the flexibility based on performance to say, you really need four cores. Now here in the pricing section, it'll help you to estimate the cost of this group of VMs in the cloud. And you gotta select if you have an enterprise agreement or if you just use pay as you go, along with your currency and any discount rates that you know you have. And then there's the time frame. Now, this is another way to reduce costs in the cloud. When your oversized VMs were running on-prem, you just let them run 24 seven because it didn't cost you anything extra because the hosts had to be on anyway. Well, in the cloud, you should turn VMs off that you aren't using so that you're not paying for them. Finally, there's the Azure hybrid use benefit, which can help reduce your VM costs up to 49%. So if you aren't using that yet, talk to your Microsoft account folks and you get this set up. <laughs> Here, let me just go ahead and get that from you. <laughs> Great. And when you're done, click Save and then click Next. Give your assessment a name, and now we can create some groups. And these groups are how we're gonna start to batch computers together for that migration. So start to think about how your migration should go. Do you wanna move just one application at a time, or maybe a whole department, or an office, or a colo? And then don't forget to think about if these servers have any other dependencies. Do they all need to move at the same time? Or do those dependencies need to be up and running first? And one final thing is that your VM can be added to multiple assessments and multiple groups. That way you can slice and dice the data any way you wanna look at it. But of course, you should only move your VMs once. So remember to clean up your assessments and groups that you're not gonna use before the migration starts. Then make sure your appliance is selected and then check off all the servers that should be in this group. Then click next and create the assessment. Now this is gonna be pretty quick because it's just organizing some of your metadata, which leads us to the most critical step in a migration, reviewing and planning. Now, are you going to go ahead and have those TPS reports for us this afternoon? Now this is a non-Azure technical kind of thing and nobody else can really help you with it because only you know your environment. Anyway, let's look at one of your assessments. 
And there's of course a bunch of things here to go through, and you can tweak the assessment settings at the top, kind of like we set up earlier. If you do though, just remember you need to click the reassess button so it shows you all of the new data. Speaking of your data, at the bottom here we've got four boxes. Three of them relate to your cost, and one is for Azure readiness. And if you click there, you'll see a high level detail for all of your VMs. And if you click on any one of the VMs, you'll see a lot more detail. Now you need to take some time and review all of your assessment data, make sure everything is grouped the way you want, sized the way you want, and configured the way you want, and make any final changes and tweaks that you need to, and then clean up what you don't need. And then we've made it to migration day. So, you know, if you want to, go ahead and uh, wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. And Azure Migrate makes this very easy because it happens in two parts. Your disks from your VMs will be replicated up into Azure and staged. And then when you're ready to do your migrations, a new VM will be created based on how you wanted it in your assessment. And those replicated disks will be attached to those VMs. And then the VM is in the exact state that it was on-prem. Here in the Migration Hub, scroll down, and we start our migration process by clicking Discover. Now I know that's a little confusing because you already clicked Discover up there, and trust me, this is the right thing to do. And you select your platform just like you did before, but things here are different. In fact, VMware here has the most options. We need to sort of play catch up. You can pick from an agent or agentless migration. And by the way, I always start with agentless because it's really the easiest. And then if you run into issues or you need deeper telemetry, I go with agents. Now the agent side is treated just like physical servers or anything in any other cloud. And that's gonna require a replication appliance. And each appliance is able to transmit up to two terabytes of data and deal with a max of 200 servers. If you need more than that, then you need the scale out appliance. As for the agentless side, you give your appliance a name and generate a key just like before. And you can choose to download that big OVA file or just the bits and install it on your own server. On the Hyper-V side, things are simpler and we're gonna be using the Azure Site Recovery Service, which basically works with Hyper-V replication. So you click that little link there to download the installer. And then you also need to click the download button to generate the registration file. Now for the installer, it's basically just next, next, next. And then you come to the registration section where you click browse and give it the registration key. Once that's verified, we're good to go. And then you come back here to the Azure portal and you need to click the finalize registration button. Then back in the migration hub, click here to start your replication. Select your source, which for me is Hyper-V. And remember way back before we did the assessment stuff, I said that you could have skipped all of that and just migrated everything as is. Be a good sport and indulge us and just tell us a little more. Well, if you did, this is where you'd end up and you would select no here, and then you'd specify all of your settings manually. But since we took the time to create all of that assessments and groups, let's use them. Check the boxes for all of your VMs and then click next. Select your target subscription and resource group, and then check the boxes here if you can use the Azure Hybrid Use Benefit. Then you select your virtual network and your subnets where your VMs are gonna live in the cloud, and you wanna use availability zones. And depending on your VM's generation, you could have extra security options like Trusted Launch, which enables you to use VTPM and Secure Boot. Then click Next. Now your VM size has been suggested for you based on your assessment, but you can change it here to something else if you want. Then you select the OS type, disk, and zone you wanna use, and click Next. Now for your disks, you can choose to replicate some of them or all of them to Azure if you need to. And then you click Next. You set your tags like you should on all of your Azure resources, and then click Next and review all of your info. When you're ready, click Replicate. Now back in the Hub, you scroll down and click right here on the Overview. On the left, you can monitor replication on your VMs, and you can also look at the replication or migration jobs. And if you jump back to your Hyper-V host at the bottom, you'll have a new replication tab. And if you click on one of your VMs, you should see the replication progress. Now, once replication is finished, you're ready to cut over, right? Well, not so fast. 
we need to talk about your TPS reports. It's recommended, at least for your first time, that you should do a failover test. So go back to the migration overview and then click the second box here to perform a test migration. Then you wanna click the dots here over on the side and select test migration. Select the network where you want your test VM to land and just wait. Then if you jump over to your resource group that you selected earlier, you'll have a new test VM. You can log on to the system, make sure everything works as expected. However it is that you have to do that for your stuff. And when you're done with the test, you go back to the overview. Then on the left, go to replicated machines and your VMs that are currently in testing will say right here, clean up test migration. Click the three dots and select clean up test migration. Then put in any notes you have related to this test if you need to. And then check the box that says testing is complete and delete the VM. So let's do this thing! Now a real migration is very similar. So check the boxes for the VMs and then click migrate. And you can check out the jobs here for all the steps that it's going through, just like before. And back in Hyper-V, you can see the VMs are now powering off. And over on the Azure side, our VMs are now building in our resource group. And that's gonna put together the VM configuration that you asked for and then attach those replicated disks so it's exactly the same as it was on-prem. And with that, you're well on your way to migrating everything up to the cloud, so what should you do next? Well, you should think about modernization, where you move away from traditional servers to something like containers or cloud platform services. And you can do that right over here. Happy learning.